Welcome back to Quick Films. Today I'm going to explain a Japanese movie called Teke Teke 2, released in the year 2009. Spoilers ahead. Remember to like the video and subscribe. The movie starts in the city of Nagoya, Japan. The residents of the city have been haunted by an urban legend named Teke Teke for a long time. She's said to be the vengeful ghost of a nurse named Kashima, whose lower half of the body is missing. Kashima had jumped off an overpass after being sexually assaulted and was sliced in half by a running train. Hence, the ghost walks on her hands and elbows, dragging her torso and making a scuttling noise that sounds similar to her name. When Teke Teke confronts a person by an overpass, she pursues them and slices them in half at the torso, killing them in a way that imitates her deformity. A schoolgirl named Kana and her cousin Rie had encountered Teke Teke one year ago. Rie was cut in half in the incident while Kana survived narrowly. They were helped by a professor and his assistant Takeda to find out about the ghost and its activity. One year after their encounter with Teke Teke, Takeda is stacking his books on a shelf when he comes across a book about Kashima. Takeda opens the book at random and comes across a line that reads that one should say Kahima-san thrice to exorcise the ghost. He laughs at the absurdity and continues stacking them. Following that, he visits Kana and her mother, who are now living at a new residence. It turns out that Kana has been in an almost catatonic state since Rie's death. She never comes out of her room and doesn't talk much. Takeda finds her sitting by her window with a grim expression on her face. He offers her a red box of sweets, which causes her to go into a frenzy. It turns out that over time, Kana has become paranoid about Teke Teke attacking her. And since the color red triggers the ghost, Kana despises it to the core. The next day, she and her mother go to a store to get medicine. Kana's mother has to be at work, so she asks her daughter to walk home alone. She wants Kana to learn to live life normally again, but is unaware of the dangers that she's about to face. On Kana's way back home, she has to pass the bridge where the ghost of Teke Teke resides. She's nervous, but relieved that she's not wearing any red clothing. But to her horror, she still hears the sounds of Teke Teke approaching her. In seconds, her body is cut in half. The packets of medicine drop to reveal that they're red in color. The next morning, two schoolgirls named Natsuki and Reiko run to the overpass to get a look at the crime scene. However, they're disappointed to see that the area has been sealed off by the police. Natsuki is intrigued by the murder and the legend of Teke Teke. She sees Takeda on the scene and approaches him, believing that he knows the person who died, but he refuses to talk to her and walks away. In the following scene, the girls are in the classroom with two other friends discussing Teke Teke. They seem to know a lot about the urban legend, like the fact that she hates the color red and that she'll be exercised if they chant Kashima-san thrice. One girl said that the chant is unfinished and they should also explain that Ka means mask, Shi means death, and Ma means demon. The others laugh at the nonsense, even though the girl insists she's correct. Later, a student named Rika arrives in the classroom and is called out by Raiko for missing an important class meeting. Rika is a bully who everyone is scared of, and now that Reiko has disrespected her in front of the class, she wants to avenge and humiliate her. Later, she and her group ask Natsuki to hang out with them outside the class. Since Natsuki is Reiko's only real friend, Rika wants to take her into the group and isolate Reiko. She succeeds when Reiko sees them together from the classroom and gets jealous. Following that, Rika and the group, along with Natsuki, go to a restaurant to eat. There, a girl asks Natsuki to leave Reiko's side and join their group. Natsuki is uncomfortable but doesn't say anything. Elsewhere, Takeda goes to meet the professor and asks him more about the Kashima case. He wants to know everything there is to know about her death and the abuse she faced prior to it. The professor hands him a research journal and tells him about a rumor that says Kashima was sexually assaulted by three Japanese men. However, to avoid being convicted, they made up a story that an American soldier assaulted her. Even after her death, the men were left free. Following the meeting, Takeda goes to his car and reads the journal. He finds out that the three men who assaulted Kashima all died after being sliced in half by a train. The last one died on the third anniversary of Kashima's death, which made the locals think she was taking her revenge. It's also revealed that a little boy named Kondo had seen her being assaulted. Kondo had since grown into an old man and is living life normally. Takeda remembers meeting him when they went to talk to Kashima's relative a year ago. Back in the school, Reiko sees that someone has destroyed her gym bag. She knows it was Rika and her group, but has no way to prove it. Later, she also finds her wallet missing. Having had enough, she goes to a girl named Sayaka from Rika's group and accuses her of stealing. Sayaka makes an excuse and turns the blame on Reiko for not locking her locker. After school, Natsuki and Reiko are on their way back home when Rika and her group of bullies pull Natsuki aside. 
they invite her to a restaurant, urging her to leave Reiko alone again. In the following scene, they're in the restaurant ordering a plethora of food. Rika buys Natsuki everything she wants to eat and mentions that she stole Reiko's wallet and is buying the food using her money. Natsuki stands up for her friend and calls them out for stealing. In retaliation, Rika gives her the wallet, asking her to return it herself. Somewhere else, Reiko is on the overpass, rethinking the events of the day. She calls Sayaka and asks her to come to the overpass, claiming that she wants to apologize for accusing her. As she's on the phone, we see Teke Teke near her feet, but strangely enough, she doesn't attack Reiko. A while later, Sayaka and a friend come to the overpass and hear Teke Teke approaching them. Suddenly, the ghost cuts Sayaka in half and runs away, leaving her friend covered in blood. Reiko sees this from the other side of the overpass. The next day, Takeda goes to meet Kondo and asks him about Kashima's death. Since Kondo had seen her getting assaulted, he knew everything about it, but he refuses to reveal anything. Takeda tells him about the deaths that Teke Teke has caused recently, begging for his help. Kondo finally states that he skipped school that day and was walking down a forest path when he witnessed three men holding Kashima down. One of them was Hiroshi Nimakazi, son of the city's chairman. He was a known criminal, but was never convicted because of his father's influence. After finding that out, Takeda goes to his car and takes note of Nimakazi's name. He isolates the letters and tries to build several words related to the name. He notes words like katana, mouth, mountain, big, and so on. Somewhere else, Rika and her group are hanging out at a restaurant, talking about Sayaka's death. One of them suggests that the death is Reiko's revenge for what they did to her, but the girls think the idea is absurd. The girl who was with Sayaka during her death is in shock and hasn't spoken to anyone yet. Meanwhile, Natsuki is in a classroom waiting for Reiko to come to give her the wallet. When Reiko arrives, she claims that she's about to avenge all the girls who have troubled her till now. She also states that she called Sayaka to the overpass so that Teke Teke could kill her. Natsuki is left speechless and doesn't know what to believe. Later, Natsuki is with her classmates when they tell her that a girl and Reiko left for home early. Natsuki realizes something is wrong and runs to the overpass. When she reaches there, she sees the girl standing alone and calls her. As the girl turns around, Teke Teke attacks her and runs away. The girl's body is sliced in half, revealing that Reiko is standing behind her. She approaches Natsuki and tells her that everyone who crosses paths with her will end up the same way. Natsuki begs for her to stop, but Reiko, in turn, challenges her to stop her. The following day, Takeda is at Kana's house paying respect to a shrine made for her. At the same time, Natsuki arrives, hoping to find someone who knows how to stop Teke Teke. She meets Takeda and recognizes him from the crime scene where she was a few days ago. She asks him about Teke Teke, but he dismisses her. Natsuki doesn't give up, though, and follows behind him. All of a sudden, she trips on something and falls to the ground. When Takeda stops to help her, she informs him that she saw Teke Teke last night and wants to talk to him about her. This piques Takeda's interest, and he agrees to chat. Somewhere else, Riko and her friend group are discussing the recent deaths. Some of them believe that it's all Reiko's fault. Just then, Riko gets a call from Reiko asking her to come to the overpass. The others tell her not to go, but Riko wants to teach Reiko a lesson for challenging her. Then, we see Takeda telling Natsuki everything about Kashima and how she had turned into Teke Teke. Natsuki mentions that her friend, Reiko, is somehow using Teke Teke to take revenge. It turns out that Teke Teke kills only those people whose names have a letter related to her assaulter, Nimakazi's name. That's why she killed Sayaka and not her friend, who was drenched in blood after the incident. Since Kashima's full name was Reiko Kashima, and Reiko's last name is Nakashima, their names are almost the same. This way, Teke Teke is using Reiko to get her more targets. Natsuki writes down Riko and her friend's names and finds out that they also all have a letter related to Nimakazi's name, meaning that all of their lives are also in danger. Takeda and Natsuki immediately make their way to the overpass to stop Reiko from killing more people. At the same time, Riko and her friend reach the railway tracks looking for her. However, Reiko is nowhere to be seen. Soon, it gets dark and they make fun of her for backing out at the last moment. One of the girls goes to the washroom while the others continue to look around. Suddenly, they all hear a noise and run towards the bathroom to see that the girl's body is cut in half. Two of the girls freak out and start to run away while Riko remains frozen in shock. The two girls run outside, only to be confronted by Teke Teke, who slices them both. Following that, the ghost approaches the only survivor, Riko. She tries to hit the ghost with a mop, but fails miserably. Eventually, she's also sliced in half and killed. Outside, Takeda and Natsuki arrive at the location and see the girls' dead bodies lying on the ground. Suddenly, they're confronted by Reiko. 
Natsuki tries to explain to her that she's being used by Teke Teke so the ghost can kill more people. Reiko starts to realize that she's right, but is then killed by Teke Teke right after. Then, the ghost makes her way towards Takeda and Natsuki, who start to run for their lives. Takeda tries chanting Kashima-san thrice, but it does no harm to the ghost. But then, Natsuki remembers something and shouts Ka, meaning mask, Shi, meaning death, and Ma, meaning demon. After she says that, Teke Teke disappears, and the two are safe. They return to Raiko's dead body to inform the authorities. However, to their horror, she opens her eyes and attacks them. From this, it can be assumed that Teke Teke is invincible because she can take over her victim's body any time. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next video.